generic Green Wings player, True. He nicknamed him the Peter Panzer because he will not go to Hive Tech oftentimes. He's obsessed with Banelings, and he's got quite a group of fangirls at the studio today. Oh, yeah, guys. If if you guys get a shot of this crowd, it's just filled with basically half green as all these stewardesses and stewardess, stewards, I guess you would call them. The stewardesses guys. and stewards, yeah. Uh, they are here as well. But this Jenner Gaming's player is going to be up against Trap of Incredible Miracle. Has a very good rating so far in Pro League, 41 and 28. And so far in 2014, 4 and 1 and 3 and 1 against Zerg. Only one game that he has played was not against Zerg. So he is very skilled in this matchup. True is going to have a hard time here. But also, True is a very good player as well. So I feel like it's going to be very even here in our first matchup. Yeah. This is a uh, traps matchup when it comes to mid game. Here are all of our Jenner Green Wings flight uh, stewardesses. All of them extremely attractive. And I like the uh, the touch of having the Jenners in their hair. Really like that. All right, we're going to our first map on Polar Night. Protoss versus Zerg here at the SPL. Up here in the top, in the green, the Jin Air Green Wings player, the Zerg player. He is true. Indeed he is. He is not false. Absolutely not. To the bottom of the map in blue for Incredible Miracle, the former STX player. It's Trap. And, uh, you know, I let's talk about this uh, crazy crowd that we have today. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about Cure. It's actually his two-year anniversary since his debut. So he debuted in March in 2012, and today they're celebrating his two-year anniversary. And as such, actually, all of us as casters, all five of us, have been given some gifts, some snack packs. I got some orange uh, orange drink. You know, some orange carbonated squeeze. Orange squeeze thing. That's that what it's called. Pretty good. I got the grape one. It wasn't carbonated, so non-carbonated soda kind of thing. Just oh, like yeah, a, that's a right. Actually, it's not carbonated. It's just canned. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's in it, but it was pretty good. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it during. I had my muffin as well. Seems like you didn't go for that quite uh, yeah. as uh, fast as I'm I I'm not did. ready for it yet, but later. Um, but going back to this this concept of Jin Air, Jin Air has invested so much into esports in Korea right now. They're one of our newer Kespa sponsors. Um, they just recently joined, like, in, in, in the past year or so, uh, right? And now they've invested into not only StarCraft 2, but League of Legends as well. And you can see they've brought a ton of stewardesses down here to the studio to support the players. And if you're Jin Air as a sponsor, they're doing decently in League of Legends. Uh, and they're also, if you look at them in StarCraft 2, currently in first place by far in, in Pro League. So if you're a Jin Air as a sponsor, you're looking at this very happy. And they're investing a lot. So if you're really into Korean esports and... Uh, do you have any idea of how to contact Genera or send them tweets? Because I know they have Twitters and also, uh, you know, if you're considering flying, maybe using them would support esports directly. And I'm yeah. just really happy we have this new amazing sponsor who's committed heavily to esports right now. Is he going to do this? Oh my god. Wow. Well, he's... this is going to be interesting, to say the least. Yeah. He's going to block it for now. Let's this probe is like, what? Another Genera's fan here. That says Jin Air Green Wings. <laughs> As you guys probably could have guessed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so true, guys. If if you want to do anything to help out the esports, definitely make sure you use the brands that we have here, if you get the opportunity, because it will uh, definitely show your support for the the scene. And it's, it's just, now it's just really funny that he he has this hatch here and doesn't look like Trap realize that this was going to be a possibility. He even like finishes a pylon over here. He's actually bringing a ton of probes right now. He wants to kill this. We, with all these probes on here, I don't think we're going to see an attempted uh, Evo. It's just basically going to be impossible to get that up. But if the hatch finishes, the creep will actually delay that Nexus even further. I think it's going to finish, actually. I think it ne might finish here. Mothership Core going to try to make me wrong, but I think it's going to finish, man. 
And then he's going to have to pull those probes away. He doesn't want any probes to go down to Brulings. Barely finishes. And Brulings will kill the Zealot here, it looks like. Ooh, and does he even save it? Oh, wow. Just barely saves it. Like you mentioned, the creep is still there. Uh, Trap retaliating with the pylon block here at the third base. But his Nexus is going to be delayed a huge amount here. Yeah, and it's still two base against one base with this, even though his third is delayed. And it's also further delayed by that pylon. So, um, let's see actually how Trap decides to transition here. Obviously, he's going to drop a Nexus. He can't just one base it. But, see a uh, four gate or something? It's like, what? I mean, we have seen this, like, rarely, but it's just usually not effective. That's why it's so rare. He is going to eventually kill this Overlord. Yeah. And actually, I don't know if the there. Overlord's going to be able to see the Nexus unless he sacrifices himself here. Looks like he may have been trying to turn around, but... The thing is, he can, he can reasonably assume that it's there. Yeah. But he doesn't know for sure. Seems like he's sending a bunch of Zerglings across the map to try to get a better idea. He also has an Overlord over here. Maybe see if there's any more buildings in here. Doesn't see much. Doesn't see the Stargate, which uh, Trap has going up. Nice catch here on that probe in the middle of the map. Seem to be set on hold position there on the watchtower. And the follow up here is going to allow him to try to control the map with uh, the Stargate units. Control Overlords. Kill drones. Try to capitalize a little bit on the fact that the Zerg committed so much resources to this hatchery and also lost mining time and lost drone production. It's only two harvesters up right now, so that's pretty good for Trap. Um, and of course, just a picture of some of our Jin Air players here. It's like try to win within uh, 10 minutes. Oh, uh, it's win, win in 10 minutes. Get a GG, literally. She's like, she's like, I, I don't know how much of this StarCraft I can take. <laughs> you guys got it. You guys got to win in 10 minutes. I had to go back to doing stewardessy things, but I'm very glad to be here to support you guys. <laughs> stewardessy things? I'm going to be going back and doing stewardessy things. She's Studying like, how, she's like, oh, how look a at plane that. works. That's a, that's a plane. All right, I can get behind this. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if an overlord counts as a plane. I don't think so, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it doesn't. That's a cool picture there. Yeah. It looks very like it's all the excited about that. And the overlord does go down. I think. If, By the way, I think the sign said if if you win, we can go home happy. I didn't quite catch that what it said altogether. I can't read it from here, unfortunately. Um, we may get another shot. We may. The phoenixes are going to get maybe a shot at this queen with only two of them. Not going to be uh, a good idea. Two queens over here to join them as well. So he's trying to come in here. The timing is a little bit off. He's still going to get an overlord, I think. No, not quite. There's four queens here, but the third phoenix is still too many queens. 16 drones right now, making up for lost time. Yeah. True knows that he delayed the Nexus a ton. He knows that he he sees the Stargate tech. He knows that he can pump out this many drones. He knows he's going to lose some drones with this, possibly. Here goes a couple down Oh, he can't lose that Phoenix. Solo! Nice targeting out of True, but it eventually does get away. Did he attack his own hatch for a sec there? I think he did. Not too important, but this, this is something I caught there. Well, I mean, he's getting a robotics and a forge. We could actually see a immortal follow-up for this. This is something that Trap will do. Uh, unlike Rain, Rain's a little bit less likely to do something like this, but he's already shown it to us on this very map today. A few drones get picked off here as the queens were a little bit out of position. He's just trying to abuse the immobility of those slow queens. Even on creep, they're not the fastest units. Yeah. And True's already throwing down a Hydralis then. He knows that this possibility could be coming up to him, these immortals, so he wants that kind of unit out here, but... It seems like Trap is going to drop down that Robo Bay, so we could see Colossus coming up here soon enough. Yep, some drones getting lifted up, trying to be very annoying here, and killing some Overlords here. No Spore Crawl. You know, he committed so much to the Queens, I guess he felt pretty comfortable without Spores, but with Transfuses. And very nice Micro on the Phoenixes. Does Micro back the weak Phoenixes and gets two Overlords here. Going to hold him at 102 supply. Nicely done. Hydro's range has started here. A few more Hydras now being added into the mix with the Colossus coming up here. See how he wants to play this. He could just use the Colossi to secure a third base. Not too unlikely, especially with this probe going down there right now. Could also try to hit a timing, but I don't think that's going to be how it does. There's a bit of a bad rally here on these two Overlords. He's definitely going to be able to get those, but first he's going to pick off the Overlords that are uh, that are going to be saved the soonest. so that he, can, he knows he's going to get this one for free no matter what. So it's better to kill the ones on the inside first if he can. Transfuse might save that, actually. Wow. Yeah, he's going to save it. But he's going to come in here and pick up these two Hydras. They do get transfused a lot, but they do eventually go down. Having seven Phoenixes on the map is a lot more than five when you count in all the different shots coming in, all the different energies for the picking up. 
So he has to really prepare for this. He's gotten the Hydras out, but continuing to pick up a bunch more of these drones is Trap already doing 15 drones in damage. Yeah, only one worker killed, uh, which was the probe on the watchtower earlier for True. Trap a uh, solid opening so far, but he's still down in Harvesters. His third base is still pretty late. He's making three cannons right now as he starts to prepare to defend this. His Phoenixes have done so much for him here, but now his, his time to do damage is basically over. He doesn't have enough Phoenixes to fight against this many Hydras and the Queen's count that's up there as well. Could try to maybe get this Overlord. He's going to go for drones instead. It looks like... No, he's going to catch uh, some patrolling Overlords over here. Maybe. Well, <laughs> the Hydras oh. come in here. He does lose one Phoenix. Didn't want to do that, but gets a bunch more of these drones here. Continuing to just pick at the drone count of True. He wants to force him to continue to make drones or at least bring down his economy a bit. This gas missing a drone, as is highlighted by Observer, is corrected now. He still has five Phoenixes over here. And he's going to get a few more drones, damaging the Overlords just ever so slightly. I mean, that later on, if he comes back, it's going to be a bit of an annoyance. So much commitment to Hydras here by True. I think this might be a mistake to commit this much because there's already so many Colossi out. He's got to realize that if the Phoenixes keep coming and they're going to start seeing how many Hydras he's committed to and they're going to feel pretty happy that they can convey this information to Trap because once he has even three Colossi out with range, these Hydras are not going to be a problem. And uh, Corruptor Tech is very late, something he probably has a good idea of because the Phoenixes have basically seen every nook and cranny of the Zerg base repeatedly. Yeah, definitely. Trap is going to be feeling really, really good about his composition here. He, he set up his third base very, very safely. The guy has a bunch of cannons. He has gateways guarding the cannons. He doesn't really too feel all that uncomfortable about a counterattack. He feels in a good position. It seems like True is sending his Hydras all the way across the map. This is going to be off creep, so he just had to be careful. Yeah, he does. Especially with the Colossi on the map. Well, I mean, a few drones get picked off here again. He sees the Spire timing. And with this, he's like, okay, I can start Voidries right now and plus one and I'm still going to be okay against the small amount of Corruptors you're going to be able to push out here. If he switches to Mutalis, on the other hand, this could be a bit of a shock. And there's a very low Stalker count right now. The Phoenix count has been reduced to five. Oh, nice catch here. Gets one. Trap on top of it. Does micro those away. His multitasking all game has been very, very strong. I think he's going to switch to Mutalis here, Brendan. Judging by that bank, I would say the same. Well, he's thinking about it. He still hasn't made his choice yet. The Spire is done. Starts the plus one to air attack. It's actually ahead in Harvesters right now, a trap that is 70 to 69. And the larva has disappeared. 12 Mutalis. Hydra speed now on the way. The Hydra's off creep, though, before that. Not going to be uh, very happy about these being this far away from home when this attack hits. Yeah, we're going to have four Zealots warped in right away. Would have loved to see him actually warp them in soon uh, before and then brought them in and then warp in four more. But he's going to come in with the, the Phoenix help here. He's going to lift up those Queens, allow those Zelts to continue to do even more and more damage. But once he's, these uh, Mutalists come over here, he's got to be able to clean this up. Yeah, he needs to get the Phoenixes out of here because they're really important at the defense against the Mutalists. They're going to be able to buy him a little bit of time. Now that he sees the Mutalists point blank in the face instead of Corruptors, so he knows exactly what he's dealing with. He starts Phoenix at a Stargate, an additional Stargate, a fleet beacon, two more cannons. He is preparing in every way possible right now to deal with the Mutalist switch. He knows the first few Mutalists that come out are going to be small in number because he's seen how many Hydras there are. He knows he can't afford, you know, a switch of like 20 Mutalists, for example. With a small count that he can deal with here, it's not going to be too big of a problem. There's a free war prison. Yeah, on sale right now. Yeah, for free. For a limited time only in the main base. Yeah, those Hydras are there to pick up that sale right away. Look at this. A ton of Zerglings coming along the map. Along oh, the map. that Look Hydra. At this. Or rather, that's a Colossus over here. He needs to turn around. He will start to get some excellent kills here on those Zerglings. Freeing up a little bit more supply, though, for True to make additional Mutalists. And he's making six more right now. He's hiding them, or at least I think he thinks he is. Nice four shields here. Going to save that Colossus. Gets a good trade out of that. Yeah. True is totally fine to be aggressive here, try to throw away some of these units. He's starting 16 Mutalists right now. He's going to have so many Mutalists. Like you said, I think he might be trying to hide this, even though Trap does know about this. Uh, but it's going to be hard with a bunch of Hydras on the map and about 30 uh, 30 plus Mutalists on the map as well. Uh, True, uh, Trap definitely has to have a bigger Phoenix army here. Yeah, I think he's starting to realize. Now he starts a third Stargate. Two Phoenixes at a time being produced right now. Range is two-thirds done. And uh, 
I, I don't know, man. This is a lot of Mutalis. You know, he lost a few of the spawning ones, but he's still going over 30, like you said, going up to 32, it looks like here. Plus one is done for these Mutalis as well. These gateways, probably going to be forced to cancel here. And he's even doing a little bit of extra damage to those warp gates that are ready. A few cannons buying time. There's the Nexus cannon. If he could get the Temple Archives, that'd be pretty huge. Looks like he's just going to go for cannons for now. Could actually get the Fleet Beacon here. Range is done on the other hand. Yeah, range is done, so he's not going to need that much unless he wants to go for Tempest later on. Or for like more plus two upgrades, which I think he's already started, so for now he's okay. Um, but so far, a very nice handling here by Trap. I don't know what that group is all its story is. <laughs> Might be a bad rally there, uh, but they're eventually going to be taken out here. Seems like Trap wants to move across the map. A very strong army here. He has a lot of these Phoenixes to deal with, and a bunch of Colossi in the back to deal with oh, this very no. huge Hydra army that he has here. The Hydra's, the Stalker's even blinking forward to cut them off. The Zergon's going to try to go for a counter attack, but like I said before, a huge defense here. Just yeah. as he warps in some Zealots, he's going to be totally fine. He's killing so many reinforcing Mulas that are coming out of this hatches. The Mutalists are now fighting against Phoenixes while the ground army is moving in to fight against Hydras. If he doesn't respond to the Phoenixes over here, they're going to kill drones. If he does respond to them, then this army over here is going to start picking off overlords. The defense that you talked about earlier is enough to deal with those Zerlings. A lot of Phoenixes going down here to the Mutalists, but he's still going to be able to escape. And then once he has that better range, he's just going to fight back here. The Colossus count is almost too high. There's not even any ground army for him to kill left anymore. He's down to 39 drones. All he needs to do now is deal with the Mutalists, and he has this game won. He has nine Stalkers, nine Phoenixes, three sentries here. And a Colossus at home for defense. I don't think this is going True's way this game. It doesn't look like it. He's going to try to fight this. He's trying to send these Mutalists over here. He's going to take out the Colossus. It's good for now, but with the Phoenixes coming back, they're so fast, they're going to be able to catch up to these Mutalists as long as he doesn't lose them again. Yep, and I mean, the Phoenix production here is still pretty solid. He's starting to take out some of this tech. He's taking out the Overlords as well. I don't think these Mulas are going to be able to eliminate the Phoenixes with good micro here from Trap. Even a few mistakes here, but it's just too much, and he's got too much production. Four Mutas on the way, but three Phoenixes as well, and he's losing all of his drones right now. He's losing all of his gas mining, which means these are the last Mulas that we're ever going to see this game, and I think that that is about it. 100 supply up right now is Trap. We'll kill the last of the Mutalists here. And the four that are coming out are definitely not going to make any difference. Yeah, you could just look at the base of True right now. It's in tatters. There's barely any mining going on. He's just being run over by all these Colossi now. Looks like he's getting ready to type out in the GG. Yep, that's going to be it, guys. A lot of Jynair fans here, a lot of Jynair stewardesses. But unfortunately, this is going to be the end of them. And game number one, GG Trap for Incredible Miracle will take game number one. Trap, very, very strong play. Responding decently to the early hatchery at his natural. Was able to get that Stargate up, get those Phoenixes that did a ton of damage earlier on. From there, just played very, very safe and then walked across the map and True just didn't really have the composition that he wanted against what Trap was throwing at him. Trap playing a very nice game. Always being prepared for what was thrown at him. He dealt with the hatchery that it was natural very quickly. Yeah, he still lost some of uh, the, the creep there, or the creep still happened there, but he was very on top of that. Countered very nicely with the Phoenixes. His Phoenix control was what gave him the uh, the temple lead in this game. He forced so many larvae to be made on drones and remade. You should, I guess I should say, he killed so many overlords.